What's up guys? Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris and yes, this is my lumberjack sweater. Um, it does get cold here in California every once in a while, but uh, Bitcoin is here to keep us warm. I want to start it out. Okay, Mr. Bot, stay in your home. Um, I want to start it out with Bitcoin following up on our conversation from yesterday. As you can see, we are amidst uh, trapped back in the weekend trap box. Um, just want to follow this over the next couple of weeks and see how price action reacts. Um, you can see the last few weekends of price action. What I'm referring to is when the futures market closes from Friday. In fact, there's an indicator that you can see it here. These little uh, dotted indicators here at the bottom is called market sessions. You just type it in here under indicators, uh, market sessions, and you can get the same thing right there on TradingView. Anyways, the futures market closes from roughly, uh, what is it, 2 p.m.? Now it's 2 p.m. on Friday afternoon to uh, 2 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. Daylight savings has me all messed up here, but needless to say, the market seems to get trapped over the weekend and then price either decides to go higher or to go lower. And so far, uh, we've had a mixed week. Some action uh, below uh, the box and above the box. <laughs> This feels so silly talking about it like that. Uh, anyways, I want to actually make myself a little bit smaller here. Working with a new camera setup. Hope it's not too bad. Anyways, uh, getting into what looks like a bit of a falling pizza, falling wedge, whatever you want to call it, which is more statistically more likely to Break out to the upside. There's also a nice batch, a nice batch of liquidity, um, as we'll check out here on the heat map shortly to the upside. So I do think this little push down, you know, the dead gap zone, they can really go for that liquidity. Um, so let's just check it out really quick. <clears throat> There's a link in the description below if you want to get uh, heat map exposure. Uh, it's just a referral link. Anyways, uh, on Binance, uh, most of the liquidity is lying here right down at about 36,350 to the downside and then to the upside at 39,050, 39,000. So, and then you got this batch right here at 41,350. And if we look at it on a one month time frame, which I think actually is a little bit better. <clears throat> You can see the nearest pocket of liquidity uh, right around the monthly close is coming in at 38,700. So it'll be interesting to see how the month closes. And then you can see quite a bit down here around 34,000. So what does the market maker do? He sends the price closest to where the most buyers and sellers are. And that's where all the yellow is. That's where all the most buyers and sellers are. And that's where they make the most money because that's where people are getting liquidated. Uh, all right. Back on to Bitcoin following up from yesterday. I had it drawn out all pretty. And now it's just uh, had to take it off. So we had a 15 minute ascending triangle. Maybe I'll pop it up on the four hour just to make it a little more clear. Get those EMAs off of here. <clears throat> and looks like just trudging the road to happy destiny again. More sideways and up and to the right. Um, that's higher highs and higher lows. Do we technically have on the four hour? Let's get this out of here. Um, on the four hour, we've got the potential for an M in the making, M in the making. What do I mean by an M? Well, the classic M reversal formation looks like this. Do I think this is actually what's happening? Uh, no, you close below the middle there, make a lower high, and there that would be your four hour reversal. 
Uh, we take out the middle peak right here, see the M, right? And that is a reversal formation. Typically, um, you know, going to get a big move on a four hour for something like that. But uh, just first glance here, um, you know, low volatility. And then let's see where the EMAs are coming in. Off the green 55. So I would expect another bounce off this area. So just... Just want to have a bearish outlook, or, or not a bearish outlook, but an idea of what would happen if we start breaking down to the downside. All right. Um, what we did speak about, though, yesterday <clears throat> was this kind of formation, starting with, starting with, interesting. <clears throat> I need some lunch. I need to get to the gym. And I wanted to get this video out really quick, a little bit uh, less on the prepared side, but I'm going to get into what we spoke about over the weekend. I'm just looking for that weekend box, which I just deleted. Okay, so in general, uh, the formation we're looking for going into this week, our idea of the trap box was this range right here. So we're trapped in a position. Uh, we come down, make a W, and boom. Oh, that's the wrong one. Dang it. We come down and make that W. Let's see if I can get the right drawing tool out. <coughs> Trap weekend, W, boom. <coughs> Higher low. Okay, now uh, everybody who went short down here is now trapped, so they're going to send it long. And this is what we kind of drew out the other day, something like this, up to 42,000. Is it going to be in a straight line? No, it isn't. But um, that, and then it just comes right back down uh, somewhere around midweek. And I can't even believe it is Thursday already. So it's really, you know, continuation or not time. That's why I think it's a good time to take a look at the, mo the uh, monthly, which is going to close here. <clears throat> for Bitcoin at 31,300. You can see uh, it's just looking bullish all the way through. And uh, interestingly enough, this trend line uh, is more specifically seen on the daily time frame, but does go back all the way, way back <clears throat> to the 2019 high of 20,000. So at some point we are gonna come back and test this trend line, uh, you know, is it going to happen this year? I don't know, uh, but I do know that at some point, yes, indeed, we're going to come back and test that trend line. But in the short term, 42 to 48,000, definitely in the cards still. Um, where do we start to lose that uh, idea of happening, you know, maybe sometime before the end of the year? Is, well, uh, that's a good question, Chris. How do I lose that bias? <clears throat> My chart is just not being pretty today. I got to get rid of this stuff. Uh, any kind of a daily closure back below that 35.4. If you wanted to front run it on a 35,400, roughly ballpark. <clears throat> if you wanted to get out early, I guarantee you there's a lot of people just putting their stops, riding this thing up here. So liquidity is building. Wow, wrong tool right along this trend line. <clears throat> so can we come back and test it one more time? We'll just test it one more time, as you can see using the nice little fib tool. We did knock it out over this wick, over this wick. I mean, every single time it's been continuation. So when do we run out of continuations? Oh, at the end of the month is a good time to run out. Why? <clears throat> well, on a lot of times on a monthly close, something like this, you're going to see a backfill on the previous month and backfill can come all the way down to 35.7 in just a candle. <laughs> uh, so you got to be prepared for that um, end of the month happening here, but otherwise still up from here, you know, momentum's to the upside, volatility beginning to expand on the monthly from the lowest level ever. So that's good for more uh, upside continuation. And, um, Volume is, you know, gradually increasing over the last three candles, over the last three months. 
do we have a bi-monthly closing no we do not and we do not have the three month closing either so it's still looking very very bullish looking strong for bitcoin and i think i'm gonna wrap maybe end it on ethereum here really quick here just jumping in on the daily and oh i, I want to check out the zypher coin a friend of mine told me about and there's the injective bot taking off here starting to pump all right pretty uh pretty fun pretty pretty tiring exhausting getting these bots working uh day and night if anybody's got any interest in that feel free to shoot me a dm um let's see what else what else what else did i want to bring up for ethereum Consolidating in a range above the daily range high, as denoted, this massive ascending triangle. What's going to happen here for Ethereum? Well, it's either going to dance around a little more, pop down, tag this trend line one more time, or we're just going to push on through. And I'd say, you know, more likely than not, you know, momentum has flicked to the downside right now as Ethereum Bitcoin. Let's check in on that is trying to put in a higher low is that a higher low uh, i'm getting dizzy here standing up a uh, higher low you could call it a higher low if it confirms by closing above yesterday's closure why not give a chance to the bulls here but otherwise it looks like it is rolling over and ethereum would be getting weaker and this would play into a bit of a roll to the downside hmm And more specifically, just don't want to close a daily bank below uh, 1930. Yeah, that 1930 pivot. If that happens, uh, probably going to get a quick move down to this trend line. And whatever liquidity is lying behind underneath the dirt there. Let's check it out for Ethereum. And I bet you the liquidity is probably to the upside. If I had to guess, I'm not much of a guesser. Oh, look, look at that dark yellow uh, above price. So is it easier to send it up to 21.4 or to throw it down to 1,800? Uh, I would lean on the chance for the bulls, the chance for the bulls. What else do I want to bring up? Oh, yeah, Michael Saylor bought some Bitcoin today. Everybody said, oh, Michael Saylor bought and Bitcoin dumped. No, it didn't. It's, it's at the same exact. Oh, this is this is the trend we were talking about yesterday. Oh, what a beautiful trend, if, if it'll only play out just so nicely. Um, but that brings us into Monday, right? So going into Friday, Friday statistically a pretty good day for Bitcoin. A lot of times at the end of the day on Friday, you'll see, you know, everybody dumps their position. I mean, it should be an interesting Friday, in fact, because people are going to be closing out positions. Um, they're also going to be waiting for that 7, 8 o'clock while you're sleeping. They dump it on your face or they jam it to the upside like, you know, 10, 20 percent. And if you look at the daily volatility on Bitcoin, which is now uh, below 29, which is not, you know, at an extreme low, but uh, it's at a low has the chance to expand and this volatility, which is on the four hour time frame, and just picking up that green 55. So again, that still looks healthy for a bounce, you know, if trend continuation, bouncing the green 55, you can see it's lost it a few times, held it here, held it, lost it. Okay, held on, held on. Do you have any major economic news coming out? Oh, look at this horrible Microsoft. Horrible Microsoft. No, we are not in Spanish. Can I please Google something? Eject. And we're talking about the morning economic news. I think uh, there was some GDP data that came out relatively uh, bullish for the dollar. I, I haven't really been following it. I've been working day and night on these trading bots. Initial jobless claims bullish for the dollar. That came out today. And do we have anything tomorrow? Did I finally... Did that... 
know what happened here. Yes, no, yes. Oh, to profit. Good job, bot. That's crazy. Okay. Um, another one bites the dust. It doesn't look right. That doesn't look right, sir. Something, something went off. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it's the end of the day, a long day. I'm going to get myself to the beach. I'm going to prepare myself for a Friday and tomorrow ISM manufacturing data comes out. Checking in on the stock market too. It's been pretty bullish, grinding up, you know, uh, above the trend break, you know, should get a retest to the downside probably. And with that, Bitcoin could come down. Uh, hasn't been too correlated lately. Stock market, ah, oh, you punk, something, something went wrong. But, oh no, it, oh. Wow. All right. Um, looking bullish there. And TLT, is it finally getting the bounce from the heavens? It did. My friend was telling me, buy down here. I said, no, wait till it goes down here. Are we going to get an earthquake in the bond market before the end of the year? Probably not. Uh, Dixie is bouncing off this box. And as we said, gold, I uh, was trying to put a short in on gold as the dollar is probably going to get a bounce. Um, let's see how Bitcoin plays out over the next couple of days with the dollar uh, increase in the dollar will be closed next week is going to be the first. Oh, we got Fed Chair Powell's speech tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? Powell's tomorrow. So let's see what Powell says. Powell's going to pump the markets. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed some of the show. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, generally grinding up to the upside uh, for Bitcoin and Ethereum until we kind of break down below those critical levels. It's just, you know, more of the same, more of the same boring thing sideways and up. All right. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.